Today I want to talk about um, staying calm when our child is in crisis. Raising great kids is a privilege and a responsibility. Sometimes our children can't see their own greatness. Sometimes we can't. Other times we can see their greatness but struggle to step up because of our own challenges. We will be discussing the brain science, tools and techniques that help us raise great kids. Hi, I'm Cynthia Armstrong. I have been a special and general education teacher uh, and continue to work in that field. And I homeschooled my children for five years as well. And so what you um, see me talking about are the things that I've studied and I've learned and I've experimented with to see what works and what doesn't in my family and in my classroom. And today, I want to talk about um, being calm when our child is in crisis. Uh, and what I mean by crisis in this instance is anytime our child becomes dysregulated. And there's a whole degree of dysregulation that can occur. Uh, but no matter the, um, the height of our child's dysregulation, unless we stay calm, we really can't help our child because our child can only calm to the level that we're calm. So if they're dysregulated and we allow that to dysregulate us, then we're just two dysregulated people keeping us going in our dysregulation. So it's really important to um, know how to approach calm and then how to stay calm. So the kind of like the pre-step um, to um, staying calm in the crisis is to prepare for it. Uh, so um, when our child's in crisis, we can come in and be mad and match their fire with fire, which just creates a larger fire. It takes a while for that to burn out. There's plenty of fuel. Um, but if we are calm, then we are ready to help our child. And so even before they have a crisis, we want to prepare a story. We want to prepare a way to look at it that allows us to stay calm. So like if I was reacting mad with my child, like, I can't believe you're doing this. You're just, um, you know, you're doing this on purpose. Why, why are you always doing this? Or, you know, I come in with this mad, frustrated, angry story, then um, I'm obviously not calm. But if instead of um, coming in with a story that allows me to go to that mad, um, and mad is kind of that, uh, puts me in that lower brain function, then I can create a story, prepare a story that I can go to that allows me to have peace, to have calm. You know, I can um, uh, realize, oh, my, my child is just crying out for help. Um, they have a skill um, they haven't learned yet to help them deal with the situation. And so I can, you know, come in with, oh, I need to, you know, they're in need and I can provide help. I can come in with um, curiosity, you know, what, what is it um, that they haven't quite figured out yet? And so I can come in with that curiosity, that investigation to, um, that allows me to approach calmly because I'm just trying to find things out. I'm not coming in to judge, but hmm, there's something I haven't taught them that I didn't realize I needed to teach them maybe. And um, I can be looking for those things. So that's kind of the pre-step um, to come in to prepare ahead a story that will help me to go to the calm, higher functioning part of my brain rather than to join my child in their dysregulation. 
Okay, so then once I've prepared, my child goes into crisis um, and I'm calm, I was able to switch to my story that allowed me to approach calmly. Now the trick is to stay calm. Um, sometimes we can have things like that keep us right where we want to be, we approach, and then our child says something, they do something, and even though we approach calmly, we don't keep the calm. <laughs> uh, it's okay, we've all been there, um, but what can we do to help ourselves so we can help our child? So there's two things. Um, one of them is to kind of prepare um, something um, like a mantra or a little saying or s things like that that kind of help us to stay, to keep a higher energy. Um, for me, the phrase I use is eye of the storm um, because I have um, attached the eye of the storm to staying in my own power to not give my power to the children because if I lose it if I become dysregulated then I took what I have power over and gave it to my child and so I've kind of associated eye of the storm um, because I don't need to respond um, with you know fight or flight or freeze you know my child's there I don't need to go there and so eye of the storm I get to stay in my my space in my being and not give that to my child um, you might want to just say you know keep any calm or um, you know if you have any little phrase from a song that would fit in to keep that energy up music helps to keep our energy up uh, and so anything like that that phrase that mantra that you can just kind of have going on in the back of your your mind as um, as you approach and while you're working through things with your child so that's number one having that um, having that uh, kind of that mantra and then the second one that second one would be to um, have something you love um, or that you really really like that just kind of makes you smile or you know gives you that thing so um, picturing something funny uh, that somebody's done um, saying something you like somebody I know he likes to say uh, chips and queso chips and queso I guess he really likes chips and queso <laughs> me I like to um, switch to kind of like that big picture you know um, uh, you know shifting growing kids um, something um, that provides like what is it that I really want out of this because if I know what I really want out of this um, then that helps me um, but for some people that big picture doesn't quite do it so they'll say um, you know just something that makes them happy wedding cake or you know whatever it is that just kind of triggers some of those neurochemicals in your brain that help you to stay uh, in um, that higher energy state so because uh, children again can only come as high as we are so if we want our children to gain access to their higher brain those um, executive functioning skills uh, then we need to be there so uh, prepare you know have a story that helps you automatically go um, to a place where you're going to approach calmly and then as you're approaching calmly and as you continue working with that child um, kind of have um, a little catchphrase a mantra uh, and then something that you like that just helps you to keep in that high 
energy as you work with your child. So those are some um, tips, some tricks in uh, approaching calmly and then being able to keep calm. And remember that children are great by their very nature and we have that privilege and that responsibility to raise them. Hi friends, Cynthia Armstrong here. Thanks for joining us today. Please make sure that you subscribe to our channel so you can see when new videos come out and like this one. It is such a responsibility and a challenge to raise great kids and we are here to help you along that journey to make it as enjoyable and fun and fulfilling as possible. Please check out our website, www.raisinggreatkids.net, and I will leave that in the description below.